Hello everyone, how's it going? So we're going to do another review in this way because for me it's a lot easier and I find it more entertaining so I'm going to do what I like. If you don't like it, I really hope that you do now. <laughs> Either way, Shadow of Rose. So I played through the campaign twice, once on livestream normal difficulty, then a second time on hardcore difficulty. And it's a good DLC. 20 bucks is a bit expensive for the expansion, but you get the mercenaries bonus with Heisenberg and Lady D, which I played through. They're completely overpowered and broken, as you might expect, but they're a blast to play as. And then the third person mode for Resident Evil Village. There was a mod for that already, but Capcom decided to do an official uh, version of it. And it's very well crafted. Like, I played through most of the game in third person. Now, certain sections are not in uh, third person now this does have spoilers i already put that in the title but the tank section when you fight heisenberg yeah that's still in uh first person so not the entire game is in third person same thing for the cutscenes; they will play out in first person but it's a very effective third person combat system like capcom really nailed it with this now you don't have a lot of mobility options i feel like a slide option would have really opened the doors but then they would have to add that to the first person section it does make certain boss fights much easier like the propeller boss in heisenberg's lab it is so much easier in third person now, but you can't switch between third and first person. You only can do it from the main menu, so if you want to switch between them, you can't, so that sucks, but Capcom did it like that. Either way, it's very well done, and it's, it's such a new experience playing Resident Evil Village in third person. So for Shadow of Rose, the DLC is about Rose trying to remove her power so she can live a normal life. After the events of the village main campaign, she's been put into custody and is under Chris's watch because she is superhuman now, similar to what happened with Sherry and how she's kind of under the government's watch. Either way, um, Rose wants to be normal and one of her co-workers gives her a plan of how to do that. They go into what remains of the Mega Mycene and try and find a crystal that will turn her normal. And she's desperate to be normal because there are side effects to her abilities and she's been ostracized by a lot of people because of these. These are just purely like uh, physical ailments, like stuff like that. Uh, but it's basically things that, you know, teenagers and kids would mock anyone about. You're different, so they mock you endlessly for that. So Rose wants, you know, to be accepted. And she goes into the Mega My scene and she basically relives memories from the main campaign. You'll go through Lady D's castle. You'll go through, um, I forgot who the illusionist is, the doll maker. And then you'll go through the village itself. It's very well crafted and it does open up how Rose has been dealing with the aftermath of Village. Now the biggest issue with the story I would say is that Mia is put into the background. She's only mentioned like once. Like Rose never mentions her and it seems very ironic considering what happened in Village. You would expect that Mia would be like double and triple down over Rose's protection. But especially you know uh, what happened to her in the Village campaign and you know it should play that way because of how she protected Ethan knowing who he was and you know him being part mold but it's just a bit weird maybe they would bring more context to that but unfortunately this is the ending for the winter saga uh, it does end on a high note I'll say that but I hope they bring Rose back in the future she is a very likable character I like her a lot She's engaging, she's open, she's a lot like Ethan in a way, and same thing for Mia. But in terms of gameplay, uh, of course, Rose is not as capable as Ethan because Ethan has spent years perfecting his combat abilities. He's much more faster, stronger, he has a good block in uh, defensive abilities, but Rose plays more like Resident Evil 2 Remake or Resident Evil 3 remake with Claire, Jill, or Leon. She runs at about the same speed. This entire campaign is in third person. It's not in first person. So in that case, it does focus more on survival horror than it does on action horror like the village campaign. Here, Rose is slower. She's much weaker. She can take about two or three hits before she's done. On hardcore, it's two hits. On uh, normal, it's about three. And the new enemies you fight are, I won't spoil that because it's a revelation later on, but they're, they're basically they're the pale heads from Resident Evil 2 minus the healing ability. They can be taken down pretty easily, but on hardcore difficulty they run much quicker and they're more aggressive. But you'll fight them for most of the campaign with the occasional boss fight. There are three boss fights in total and they're really good. 
And uh, in terms of the atmosphere and visual presentation, it's extremely well done. Capcom, Capcom did a terrific job with this DLC. If you're a fan of Village, there's really no reason you won't like this. Now, in terms of um, going more in the line of horror here, there is more emphasis on survival. Like I stated, Rose is not that capable, so she doesn't have access to the merchant. She will have the default items and she must rely on mostly hit and run tactics. I mean, I played when I played on hardcore difficulty, I rarely used any of my resources because I, I thought I would barely get anything, but you get more than enough items to deal with whatever comes forward. Now, Rose does have one unique ability as opposed to Ethan. There's this type of freezing ability. At first, you use it in order to uh, destroy progression blockers, basically these no uh, mold nodes that block certain areas. They saturate the area in this tar-like substance that will basically uh, kill Rose if he stands in it too long. And then you eventually get a combat option of that where you can freeze enemies, but it's on a, a limited use. You have to get a special white herb in order to replenish those uses. But they give you enough of those white herbs as long as you're not, you know, overusing them. Now, in terms of the horror action, uh, horror section, they looked that people really liked the Baby Rose section from the core campaign, and they made an entire act, Act Two, based on that system. In fact, there's this section in the game. I won't, uh, I won't spoil it, but it really freaked me out, and it'll freak out a lot of people, as based on what I've seen on the live streams. But yeah, they went more in the line of that, and I loved it. So you're definitely going to have to focus more on resource management management and avoiding enemies that being said there are sections where you are forced to fight but for the most part they're not that bad they're pretty effective the only thing that i really was annoyed about the gameplay was that there's no type of knife or shoving ability because enemies will often block path uh pathways and you can't like walk over them or push them to the side so you're like i gotta get through here but then you're just stuck in the hallway or something. I wish there was some sort of shoving ability, like they did bring back Ethan's shove or something, but she doesn't have that, so unfortunately that's the reality of the situation. And also Rose runs at a much small, uh, slower rate, which is expected. You know, she's not a hardened warrior, she's just a kid. But it could also be because she wears Converse sneakers. I mean, come on people, those things have terrible padding. But yeah, it's a really good and uh, thought-provoking campaign and showcasing how Rose is dealing with being this type of hybrid human. Now, this is something that we'll get into spoilers. It's my major criticism, and it's mostly with the writing of a certain character. Now, if you don't want to be spoiled, um, pause, uh, like just leave it here, because this is something that I'm going to discuss. And yeah, all right, that's enough. The biggest issue I had was with Evelyn. Now, in the second act, you face Evelyn. She has been uh, revived in order to... There's basically this process that's going around by the main antagonist. I know I won't go into full spoilers, but there's this revival process, and they accident, this person accidentally revived Evelyn. And then Evelyn is just trying to, you know, escape the Mega My scene to get her family. You know, she's basically Resident Evil 7 all over again. But I felt like they could have had a redemption arc for Evelyn because at its core, like Evelyn was a monster, but she was also a kid and she was a victim just like everyone else by everything that transpired. She was a victim and I felt there was an opportunity for them to like give her some sort of redemption arc where uh, there's this after you beat her in the boss fight. She opens up about how alone she is, how she wishes someone loves her, how she feels so useless and pathetic. And that's why she hates Rose, because she's like, her and Rose are in the same boat. Like, both of them are isolated, they don't have that many friends. But unlike um, Evelyn, Rose had Mia, and even Chris. Chris would be considered family to her. But Evelyn never had that. She's only been angry and aggressive, and I felt like it would have been a great opportunity for them to have Rose, like, maybe understand who she is. Like, she doesn't know why Evelyn hates her. She writes that in her diary, which you can miss out on. There's actually details about the story inside the diary where you can read about it. Like, people miss out on a lot of details in The Last of Us Part Two because they don't read the diary because the game doesn't really tell you to. But it could have been a good opportunity for uh, Rose to be like, I know what you're going through. I'm, I'm alone too. But we don't have to be, you don't have to be alone. Like, 
tell me what's wrong. And then she could have broken down and cried and told Rose everything. And then Rose could have been like, I'll be your friend, you know, in some, in a common way. And before they split off. And then by, when you fight the end boss, Evelyn decides to come in some way and help Rose, stating that she's her first friend and she's going to do her best to help and dies in the process. I know that's that's just my take, you know, to give Evelyn a type of redemption arc because I felt like she's just a one-note wonder in the sense that she just comes back to just attack and project her anger of everything that happened to her. And this would have been a good left field take of her redeeming herself in the sense that she doesn't need to be angry that if she opens up that maybe she can be you know part of something and her sacrificing herself to help rose would have been that more profound to show that there is redemption in this and she didn't have to be who she was if she was given certain opportunity at least that's how i would have done it because to me it just it, it was really heartbreaking to see evelyn in that state because knowing what she went through, everything she's done. It doesn't excuse what she did to the bakers and everyone, you know, the people who were kidnapped and forced into those mold experiments. But, you know, some way to make her into more than just the angry, sad little kid who just wants a family, you know, give her something. But that's how I would have done it. The DLC does end on a high note and like, uh, it could open opportunities to bring back Rose, but Capcom already stated that this is the end of the Winter Saga. But I would love to see Rose and Sherry, like, to come back as a team. That would have been freaking awesome. Or, you know, Rose come back and uh, fight alongside Chris or in some way. But it does seem that Rose's story ends here because she has nothing to fight for anymore. Like, for the most part, everything has ended. Her family's left in peace. They have a final goodbye and everything. Mia's still alive, but we don't know where she is because they don't really mention her and where she's uh, gone. But yeah, it's a good ending. It gives uh, Rose enough opportunity to grow and showcase that she's uh, a different person and her struggles, while at the same time providing us with a pretty eventful campaign with a solid ending. And as I stated, for $20, you also get the mercenary mode where... Lady D and Heisenberg basically are overpowered juggernauts who just wreck everything and they're a lot of fun to play as. You know, you just play as them and they just wreck everything. And then we also have the third person mode for the core campaign, which is definitely worthy exper worth, worth experiencing because it does make the campaign different in a lot of ways. Not, not everything is in first person. The cutscenes still play out in uh, first person. And uh, the tank battle against Heisenberg is also still in first person. But it's a really good um, it's a really good option. Now you can't switch between third and first person. You have to do that from the main menu. I'm not really sure why. Maybe there's some sort of technical reason behind it. But certain boss fights do become easier in third person, like the Propeller Man. Way easier in third person because you can actually see what's going on. And for the most part, it's a very well done option. Like Capcom really went above and beyond. Ethan still performs extraordinary uh the third person combat is very well done they clearly know what they're doing with all this stuff and yeah it's a lot of fun like i would highly recommend it uh, replay the campaign in third person it's a brand new experience either way that's my uh conclusion on shadow of rose if you like the main campaign this is really a no this is really just a must buy it's very fun engaging i love the campaign it's only about two hours long took me about two hours and 15 minutes on hardcore and my first playthrough i took two hours and 30 minutes so it's not that difficult if you completed village of shadows on the main campaign this is a breeze in comparison to that again focus more on avoiding enemies than actually fighting so tell me what you think about shadow of rose I do have a hardcore walkthrough available below. I have boss fight guides for each of the boss fights on hardcore. And I might be doing an end and explain. We'll see. It doesn't really seem like I should because it's pretty self-explanatory. But why the hell not? Either way, tell me what you thought. Like, subscribe, comment. Consider supporting me on Patreon. All that stuff is linked below, including my Twitch channel. Like, dislike it if you dislike this video. You know, feedback is always welcome. And I will see you all next time. Stay awesome, everyone.